In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Semantic Scholar. And so Semantic Scholar is an AI powered literature search tool. And it's actually behind a lot of the other tools that I've talked about on this channel, such as Elicit or Research Rabbit. They're actually using Semantic Scholar's database to be able to pull in um, different literature related to it. I want to introduce you to the actual tool of Semantic Scholar because it can actually be really, really helpful, even if you're not using these other tools that pull from this database. So I will have the link to Semantic Scholar below. Here is Semantic Scholar. So you can see it's a free AI powered research tool for scientific literature, and it has a search button here. Now it does have an API, and that is what a lot of other tools use to be able to get to Semantic Scholar's database. So I can search in here anything that I'm interested in looking for. So I'm going to do what I do on a lot of other um, tools that I use and search about steroids and ion mobility. So I'm gonna do steroid analysis by ion mobility spectrometry and go ahead and hit search there. So it takes about a minute for it to load the results. And you can see here, it says about 3,720 results for my key phrase. Now, a little bit of a different thing of what Semantic Scholar is doing than versus what Google Scholar does is that Semantic Scholar is taking your words and letting AI search for what is semantically similar, what has similar meanings to what you search versus looking specifically for the keywords that you were searching for and trying to find articles related to those. So you may find more articles that don't directly have the keywords that you had in it. So we can see that the first thing that comes up is the steroid analysis by eye mobility spectrometry. Um, it actually matches the exact same title. I didn't realize that, but this is the um, review that I wrote on this topic in 2020. And then you're seeing a newer version come up. So this is a steroid assay using eye mobility. Um, a few, this is a little bit of an older one, looking at steroid metabolites in urine. This is a liquid chromatography ion mobility one again. So you can see we're getting pretty good. All of these are including some form of ion mobility and steroids in them, and the years kind of range. So we see like the most recent one thus far has been this 2022 one here. We see some 2017, 2019, 2021, and such. So you can see that we can see more and more here. But I want to show you some of the features that are available with Semantic Scholar. So we can filter up here at the top. So we can filter by the fields of study. So we can specifically look at those that are in chemistry or those that are in biology. So if we specifically filter for chemistry, because that's technically my PhD is actually in chemistry, we see that we're getting really similar results. Most of these are probably going to be chemistry and biology, but you can see we're getting similar results throughout here. And you can see right here, this is actually a duplicate of each other. So you may actually see some duplicates. You can see this one's probably coming from PubMed where this one's coming from the actual journal itself. So that's one thing to be careful of whenever you're searching these. This is kind of web scraping to create its database. So it may pull the same type of article or the same article from multiple different sources and think it's different articles there. We can also filter by the date range. This is pretty common in anything you're doing. You can filter by this year, the last five years, or the last 10 years. And then you can use these scroll bars to filter to specific years. So if I wanted to filter from 2010 on, I can use that scroll bar there to be able to do that. You can also filter for whether it has a PDF or not. So you can see here, there's this little thing. It says this paper has a PDF. And if I click it, it is actually going to open up the site for that PDF. So if it has a PDF open access, you can go ahead and open that up um, just by clicking that PDF. And then you can see it has save. So this, you would have to log in to save it to your Semantic Scholar. You can set up an alert. So this also requires you to log in, but you can set up an alert for similar articles to that one. And then you can also cite it. So you can see it gives you the, whenever you cite it, it gives you the bib text. You can export the bib text here, or you can export the EndNote file. And then you can actually copy the bib text here. So if you wanted to save it in something like Zotero, all you have to do is click copy and then in Zotero import from clipboard and you would be able to import this in. 
It has um, three other styles, so MLA, APA, and Chicago, that you can go ahead and export as well. And you can bulk export from your library. So if you save multiple of these to your library, you can go and sign in. You can go in and then click them all and export the bib text to be able to upload multiple pull at once. You can also select the specific authors here. So this is only a few of the authors um, that are available, but if you wanted to look specifically at a few of these, you can select the specific authors and then the specific journals or conferences. So for example, a lot of mine appear in the Journal of the American Society for Mass Spectrometry, um, but analytical chemistry and other ones could work really well as well. So those are the different filters that you can apply to your um, search results. You also have these sort. So you can sort by relevance, you can sort by citation count, you can sort by the most influential papers, and then recency. So if we sort by recency, you can see now we're getting some from August 2023. Like this is only a few weeks ago, um, more from 2023. But you can see that neither of these are actually talking about steroids and ion mobility. They're really only talking about ion mobility. So we're removing that relevancy to get to recency. If we sort by citation count, you can see that now again, most of these are not specific to ion mobility. Like this is even glycan analysis by ion mobility mass spectrometry, not steroids. So it's going to take us longer to get there, but these are probably going to be more of your reviews or really, really influential papers because they have the most citations. So if you want to get results that are super relevant to your search term, you're going to wanna search by relevance. Um, but if you want to look at what came most recently, then searching something by recency might also help or sorting by relevance and then narrowing your date range to more recent papers will allow you to also achieve that. So another interesting thing that Semantic Scholar has launched is their beta TLDR. So basically, this is giving you a AI generated summary of what the paper is about. And you can see over here, these spaced outlines means it's going to include that TLDR there. And if you don't want to see it, you can just remove it by clicking that. And now you're not going to see it. You're just going to see the titles here. But if we look at the TLDR, I'm going to go to a paper that I wrote. So I know this is a paper that I wrote. Here's the TLDR, and we're going to go ahead and click expand. So you can see it gives you the abstract here as well, and it gives you the TLDR. So it says traveling wave ion mobility spectrometry was employed to separate multimer steroid metal adducts of isomers and mixtures and shows the ability to separate steroid isomers with a decrease in resolution compared to single component standards because of the formation of heteromultimers. So that's actually a really good um, summary of this paper. Basically, uh, the paper previous to this one looked at steroids in a single component mixture, and then we overlaid their um, basically arrival time distributions and saw that we got really good separation. Um, but when we added two of those steroids to the same mixture, we found that we uh, created this thing called a heteromultimer, so two different um, steroids that adduct to the same metal. Um, and because of that, we saw decreased separation. So that, uh, that one is actually a really good um, example here. We'll do one more, so we'll expand this one. This is another one that I wrote. So overall twins successfully separated estradiol glucuronide isomers in positive ion mode and tandem aspect MSMS via CID enables the relative quantitation of each isomer in negative ion mode, where the sodiated dimer adduct provided adequate separation of both single and two component. Yeah, so that is accurate. In positive ion mode, we use TWIMS with this sodiated dimer adduct to get separation. And then in negative ion mode, we were actually able to quantify these using tandem mass spec. So that's pretty accurate. I think the the emphasis was kind of put on the sodiated dimers, which is fine, but the cool part of the paper was actually this tandem MS part there. So overall, I think these TLDRs are doing a pretty good job. Obviously, as with anything related to AI, when it is generated by AI, you want to make sure that you are confirming it with the paper before you try and write anything about it or anything like that. But these are really filled with a lot of good keywords. So for example, if you copied and pasted this as a Zotero note or in your Notion like snippet, if you use my Notion um, literature organization template, if you copied and pasted 
pasted that into there and then you searched heteromultimer because you're like, wait, there was a paper that talked about that, you would really be able to easily find this paper even though heteromultimer doesn't appear in the title itself. So overall, I think this does a pretty good job with its TLDR and that TLDR is free and kind of comes with this. The only thing that I would like to be able to see a little bit more is the ability to kind of download like a CSV with all of these TLDRs and abstracts. Um, but you could use something like a listen to be able to download like the summary information from that as well. So I do want to show you this because this is a free tool. It should remain a free tool. And if you are someone who's like, okay, as some tools are going to pay, do you still want to be able to find this information? This is a tool that you can use. So I will leave a link to Semantic Scholar down below. And if you are struggling with figuring out which of these papers to read, check out my 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's a guide that walks you through exactly how to complete your first research project. And and come up with your idea and everything like that. And it also talks about how to read and find different research articles as well. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions about this software, leave them down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.